Hi there, this is David Sussman. Sitting next to me is Joseph Richmond, and this is Dave and Joe's Adventure. In today's episode, we're going to be going into the depths of porn. That's right, Dave. Today we have an exciting show in store for you today. It proves an exciting time of the year. Dave and I recently had a chance to visit one of the top Jewish institutions in Jerusalem, or Sameach I mean, Eshat Torah. So today, we are excited to show you this. All right, that sounds great. Let's get started, Joe. That's right, let's do this. Chef Herschel, what exactly should a person be doing on Purim? Tis the season to be jolly. So like we have to use all kinds of substances, alcohol or any other kinds of substances, so that you can, you can uh, become joyous, whether you're joyous or not. That's an interesting perspective there, Chef Herschel. But is there any substance say, that one should stay away from? One substance that you should stay away from is whole wheat flour. That won't help you be joyous at all. Whole wheat. Hmm. Okay. I'll be staying away from whole wheat, I suppose. Chef Herschel, you previously said that one should take any substance in order to connect to Hashem, in order to feel the joy. Are there any other substances that you partake in during porn? Uh, what are you trying to get to me? Are you trying to incriminate me? Who exactly do you work for anyhow? I mean, I thought this was uh, going to be an internal house horror movie, and it's turning into some interrogation here, trying to get some goods on me. Whoa! Relax! Chef Herschel, relax! There's no need to get violent! Yeah, let's, let's get back to the original question regarding alcohol. Why do people drink so much of it? So you get a little, you know, you get a little bit high. So you get a little, you know, you get a little bit high. And you lift yourself out of this, this physical trap that we're in, and you come up to a very high spiritual level. That's, so that's exactly why we drink. And to get a little high. I can relate to that. So let me ask you something, Chef. What are you going to be getting high on this form? Uh, Red Bull and vodka. Thank you, Chef. Lechaim. Lechaim, Lechaim. Wow, Chef, what a great guy. He's great. Uh, so Dave, let's uh, ask the other rabbis uh, exactly how much one should be drinking on Purim. That's a good question, Joe. Azab modern the pillow. A person is obligated to get smashed. So drunk that you cannot even stand on your feet to drink until you don't know the difference between Baruch Mordechai and Arham until, 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 uh, until, uh, until he's not capable of drinking more. There's no limit. That's the point. That's the extent you have to drink. You see, this is why we drink on the poor. See, most people, because the world is the way it is, you know, like gravity and, the, you know, you walk out of your apartment and it's the street, you know, the same street you went to bed on. Dave, that, that was really deep. <laughs> yeah, I know, like, surf's up, dude. Did you guys just mention surfing? Whoa, just relax. Nobody mentioned surfing. Anyhow, rabbis, is there any other, you know, substance that one should be partaking in during form in order to help them connect to Hashem, a Kaddish Baruch Hu? We'll get to that. <laughs> it's a good question. We'll get to that one day. You should get a little bit, a little bit high. You should get a little bit, a little bit high. <laughs> yes, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> what a question. This is the sweet potato. I, I really enjoy sweet potatoes on Purim. Sweet potatoes? That's completely new to me. Yeah, you must make vodka with it or something. Sweet yeah. potatoes, huh? Anyhow, this question is for Rabbi Horowitz. Rabbi Horowitz, you're famous for your theory of the cosmic bagel. How does the cosmic bagel? and Purim come together. Purim and the Cosmic Bagel. It's very simple. Now Yom Kippur, we are climbing out of that hole and getting straight into the bagel. Well, obviously on Purim, we go to the top all the way. Because when you have that little bit of extra help with the bottle of wine, you can feel you're climbing that ladder express all the way to the top. And you're gonna hit the infinite without a question. If you don't, try some of my wine and you will get there. Don't worry, let's go. All the way. Cosmo Bagel and Purim, it works great. Wow, Dave, looks like we need to get some of that
that Rabbi Hurwitz wine. That's right, it sounds like that's our ticket straight to the infinite. So this question for Rabbi Lichtman, uh, who exactly was this Haman character? Here comes the answer. It's a fastball screaming over home plate at 97 miles an hour. He was a walking, talking, gum-chewing Chil Hashem. Now that we know who Haman really is, let me ask the rabbis a question. If you were to run into Haman in the streets today, what would you do? What would you say to him? Question, Dave. Wow. A right left to the head. If I saw Haman the Russia Marusha Mamza Mukashin Manuvel Shoitam Alamoita poke his eyes out. I'll kill you! I pull him over, start schmoozing with him, become friends, and then then time to my shoe and go. I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna pound you, I'm gonna eat you for supper. That's it, Homan. You and your home Tashins, it's over! I know one thing is for sure, Dave. I wouldn't want to meet Rabbi Gabriel Friedman in a dark alley. Rav Kahana, if you were to run into Haman in the streets, what would you use to defeat him? <laughs> Rabbi Label, if you were to run into Haman in the streets, what would you use to defeat him? The New England Patriots! So Rabbi Rossman, uh, Dave and I have been discussing uh, quite a bit recently. Uh, we've been trying to figure out why exactly you work in Asia Torah. Can you help us uh, understand this? Well, Dave, I guess he hasn't figured it out either. Yeah, it looks like somebody needs a little five-finger clarity. Now, last but not least, we have the opportunity to ask a few questions to the Rosh Hashiva of ancient Torah. That's right, Dave. Uh, I wanted to ask Rosh Hashiva, um, Mordecai is a significant player in the Purim story. He's a tremendous role model, tremendous hero, for that matter. Um, according to some, however, interestingly enough, they say that Mordecai was uh, Hasidic. Um, with respect to that, Rosh Hashiva, uh, being the head of a uh, Litvak institution, how would you uh, view Mordecai as a role model for his tour students? Uh, we love Hasidic Russian players. No, I mean that we love Hasidic. <laughs> I mean, I interesting, interesting, understood. So let me ask you a personal question. How do you categorize yourself? As a Hasid or as a Litvak? I'm a Hasid. I'm a Hasid. I'm a Hasid. Wow, that's news to me, Joe. Yeah, I would have never thought. Yeah. So, Rosh Hashiva, what's the point of drinking so much on Purim? In order that we should be without worries, we drink. That's nice. Uh, Rosh Hashiva, how do you feel about some of the other responses from the Rebbeim and the Torah regarding drinking? Whoever connects to Hashem in any way, how he feels it, he should do it. Wow, all right, so uh, sounds good to me. Yeah, Dave, I say, what are you, what are you thinking about starting up right now? With the of Hashem? I think it's a good idea. Let's do a little time. Single malt whiskey? Yeah, of course, please. Highland Park, 12 year. Nothing but the best. The Chaim the Chaim makes your Torah. Chaim. Well, that's about it for this edition of David Joe's Adventure. That's right. Come view us next time when we take an adventure to the Yom Yom trip with Asian Torah students. See you later. Porin, it's time to get drunk! Right off and forward.